Hey y'all, it's Renegade, and it's time again to spill more reality as we get into the game-changing fourth week of Big Brother 26. Let's not wait any longer and get into things right away by introducing my co-casters as we discuss all of the budding sh uh, showmances, deep fake Angela's, and blown up house-changing votes that this week had in store. First off, he'd said he'd never use the power, but surprise, he's using it tonight. Stuck Dimadab, done. How are you feeling tonight following that game-changing eviction? Oh, i feeling amazing because that was... I'm so happy that they turned on the three C's and Cedric because they were probably going to try to run the whole thing with, like, the Collective and the Pentagon. So I'm happy it finally happened pretty early, surprisingly, but it needed to happen. Oh my god, we are so so eating so good here knowing that this huge like just not necessarily like pivotal threat uh, i would say necessarily but just pivotal pot and piece you know that's in so many different power alliances is now officially removed from the board and i'm just so surprised it happened as well here too um but before we get into all of the politics of that also joining us tonight just like the whole house he might also have a crush on tucker who knows it's quacker jack Jack, now that the house has finally realized that they're playing Big Brother, is the game officially on now? Girl, yes, the game is officially on. And just to make it clear, I don't have a crush on Tucker. I was just the one supporting the cancellation of Young Cedric. <laughs> Unfortunately, on the night that Young Sheldon premieres, Young Cedric has been canceled per the tweet. <laughs> Gotta love it, y'all. Um, honestly. Heading into this week, um, it felt like the writing was on the wall that given the fact that Quinn had his deep fake HOH power and would likely be trying to, you know, get back into the graces of the massive eight person collective alliance, especially with Cedric and Quinn basically, you know, being against our house saviors, Angela and Tucker at this point, and especially with Mackenzie's power gone, it just seemed like we were doomed to replay a situation that happens all too often in Big Brother's past where the massive power alliance just sort of pick people off that aren't in it. Was I the only one scared going into this week that the downfall of this season of Big Brother was going to be Quinn? Uh, especially because he has one of the strongest powers in the history of the show at his fingertips going into this week. Girl, no. He literally might be one of... He might have been one of the biggest flops in history like of all time, and it is shocking how this week ended up going down. But you know what? even more than his HOH play, it was him being so goddamn cocky and not being able to keep his damn mouth shut. That's what did him in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot about Quinn's gameplay that I'm just like, what are you thinking? Um, Doug, Quinn's on your team. What you thinking about Quinn here? Are you are you regretting yet now that you didn't pick Angela? <laughs> um, I... I think I am kind of regretting not picking Angela because now seeing how all the dynamics are going, I feel like Angela might be going under the radar, like take, uh, turning into an alligator as we as we've seen a couple of seasons ago on Survivor, and I could possibly see her going to the end right now. So yeah, I definitely do regret picking uh, picking Quinn over Angela. I'm very excited for Angela's chances at this moment. I don't know if I, I could see her as the Al Gabler just yet, given the fact that, I mean, mm -hmm. well, Gabler didn't do anything good. So um, I would say that, I mean, I get the idea of what you're saying, though, that unlikely person that kind of threw themselves on the bottom and then kind of worked themselves all the way to the top. Um, I, I still don't know when Gabler's game changed around. Uh, but that's for a Survivor 43 edit podcast. But, you know, um, uh, I could see Angela hopefully being on the directory because she's winning a bunch of competitions. Um, at the same time, though, too, I could also kind of maybe see her being uh, the Big Brother Canada 5 version or, or Big Brother US version of, like, Karen, unfortunately. Um, we'll kind of see. I just hope that we have so much more Angela for weeks to come. Um and we can kind of start off uh, on where things happened that led us to this kind of shocking outcome um, that leads us to a possibility in a world in our timeline where Angela could last even deeper into this game. As week four 
of uh, our season begins with the head of household competition, Bad AI. And it was a face off head to head style where they had to do a, uh, they watched three images on the screen and uh, one of the images had a hidden error, like an extra appendage or even like seagulls stuck in musical instruments. I, I don't know what they were going for here. I think there was spaghetti and baseballs at some point. Something off was going to be about the, 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 the image. You had to figure out what it was. First person to figure out which of the three images had that error would move on to the next round. And in the um, twist of the competition, which we always like to see, um, they had to choose the next two to compete. So you have to kind of choose wisely because otherwise you will be calling out um, your alliances and there will be a lot of politics here as we get to see. Um, I think some of the more important kind of face-offs that we kind of see here were uh, as after Cam won the first round against Chemo, uh, he gave us the face-off that everybody wanted here, which was Quinn versus Tucker. But Quinn had a strategy to just buzz in quickly and he decided to just pick, I think, B right away, which ended up having, or sorry, he picked C right away. And he ended up missing a pirate ship that had underwear for sales. So he was eliminated, and Tucker just moved on to the next round. Um, but, you know, at this point in time, Quinn didn't need to win. He was going to be head of household anyways. So it didn't really matter what he really did there, but I still kind of thought it was a little lame that he just kind of buzzed in really quickly. Um, but I think the matchup that I didn't think that we were looking for that we got here was Angela versus Brooklyn. Um, as the two go back and forth picking each other, which offends Brooklyn as, you know, as a married mother, that clearly the married mothers of the house cannot be married in their mothership together. And clearly they might be at odds to determine who is the most married mother of the mothers that are married in the house. So, you know, um, we have a scene later on here where Angela tries to fake cry and the tears aren't coming. And they have a, their confrontation and their talk here, but we don't talk very much about Brooklyn here on the podcast. I, I think she could be playing one of the better games at least prior to this week, um, or at least prior to this vote, I should say. Um, and I think her and Chelsea had a very secret duo ship that kind of very slowly came to light this episode. But now that she's feuding with Angela... What are our thoughts here now on Brooklyn's chances, especially knowing what happens at the end of the week now that she's feuding with Angela and the fact that this feud even started? Doug, I want to hear from you first. Um, I think she probably thought she was playing a little under the radar game, but as we've seen with Tikor and Chemo, they basically clocked her alliance with Chelsea and how close they were. And I also thought it was kind of bad game... Pretty stupid, I think, to just go after Angela when she was the, when Angela uh, put her up, but then she put Angela up again, and then Angela put her up. It's like, why are you getting mad when you also put her up? So it's like, how was that? A, I didn't get how that was an attack on her, and I thought that was kind of bad to just go after Angela for that when she, it felt like Angela kind of did just because she put her up first. So why wouldn't you do that happen? I was kind of waiting for it, honestly. I, I feel like they've always had this tension, this married mother versus married mother thing that Brooklyn just needs to just let go, girl. Like, I know you're trying, girl. I want to be the first uh, African-American that was born in July that went to college on uh, five years of college to win Big Brother. That would be my title. How's that? I like that. Um <laughs> Jack, what are your thoughts here on Brooklyn? Because um, I'm, I'm a little worried for her um, moving forward, uh, especially as um, the end of the week here, we find out that she's no longer in the majority. You know what? Brooklyn did this to herself. Um, it's interesting to see how things have flipped this week. And um, as a married mother myself, I just think it's really fucked up. That she would ever have gone against Angela like that? No, um, but seriously, um, Brooklyn, she was playing a pretty good game. She was trying to play both sides. She knew she was at the bottom of the Pentagon. She knew she was then at the bottom of the, like, collective. She kind of, like, knew her spot and was completely fine with it. She thinks she's making all these good alliances. She thinks she's gotten good with Chelsea because of their religion. She's kind of got this thing with Mackenzie going on that doesn't really get noticed much because, like, 
she doesn't want really Mackenzie near her, which is kind of funny, it seemed. Um, and I think what we're starting to see is, like, Brooklyn's game starting to crumble because Brooklyn is kind of a mean girl. Like, underneath it all, she tries to present this like, very nice person, but, like, a lot of her actions are very on the cusp of, like, going in with the in crowd just to make sure that she is, like, good. Like, I understand protecting yourself, but it almost seems like she shuns people kind of thing, like the others do, in a way. And I think that's what really came here to this point that was like, ooh, we got to this issue because now, all of a sudden, we have a vote that she's kind of left out of and she doesn't understand why. And part of it isn't her fault because I do think ultimately this week is caused completely by Quinn, and not even just his his HOH being a, a super fail flop of a power that he used so incorrectly. It's it's really just him and his inability to like socialize. And and this is why I'm very I am very like hesitant to create an alliance early in a game and stick with it immediately, even for the first couple weeks. Like I really don't like this idea of creating alliances with people you don't know and actually putting value in them. Because now we see some of the people that she has aligned herself with cannot be trusted. They got big ass blabber mouths. And on top of that, they don't even really want the exact same things she does. And she thought she was cool because she thought she was keeping people on the, like in the, uh, in the dark of all these secret alliances happening. And turns out that someone in her secret alliance told everyone in the house about the secret alliance. So, like, she made kind of a a mistake. I don't want to say it's a rookie mistake, because I think it's a lot higher level of strategic mistakes. But, like, she made a huge mistake. It's a big blunder in her game. And I think there's possibility to come back, because I don't think anyone's necessarily looking at Brooklyn as, like, the biggest villain ever, because Quinn is so in the, in the span of being in, in the attention right now. But I am nervous for her. But even though she's my pick, I, I don't really care because I'd rather Rabina be the winner. <laughs> Speaking of Rabina, and we're kind of jumping ahead here, um, something tonight on tonight's live feed episode that kind of makes me worry for Brooklyn, I don't know if y'all caught it, but it was the conversation between Brooklyn and Rabina right before the vote happened, and it looks like, at least from my perspective, that the way that the conversation was going, or, or what little we caught of it, that it was a conversation from Brooklyn telling Rubina that maybe she might not have the numbers and she's going to be voting with the majority. And Rubina ends up kind of walking away very upset and like going to the room of people. Um, I have a feeling that conversation is going to come back and bite Brooklyn in the ass so hard, especially given the ultimate result here that happened here. But, you know, um, I, I get the feeling that a lot of her game is probably going to be outed, and I'm a little worried for her. But I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm kind of being very happy that I did not pick her for my draft team. I'm actually very happy with my draft team right now. <laughs> Speaking of, um, and uh, but the one person we did not pick, Miss Angela, again the Gabler of our Big Brother twenty six draft, wins head of household this week. <laughs> It's only because we didn't we didn't pick we didn't pick Gabler so and Gabler ended up winning. This is exactly what happened. We didn't pick Angela, so Angela's gonna win. That's just how that works. Um, so sorry, that's why she's the Gabler of this draft. Hopefully, she'll be the, if she just wins it, then she can just be Angela. She can be the Angela of the Big Brother drafts moving forward. Okay, anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, Angela wins um, and becomes the first player this season to win two head of households. Um, and the fact that she's working with Tucker here now, um, at least somewhat degree, to some degree, I, I don't think Tucker's including her in absolutely everything, um, but they're definitely having some strategic conversations here, and Angela is very open that she's supporting Tucker, um, on so much to the point where she ends up stalking him later this week, but you know, if we get that a, a few moments here. Um, Initially, um, going into this week, I think one of the biggest uh, storylines was the Tucker Rubina showmance here, um, and it seems like they're trying to keep themselves away from each other as best as they can. But it def I mean, it's human nature. They're not gonna. They're how much longer do you think these two are gonna be able to hide this for? Because honestly, I, I think after this week, especially, 
I think they're locked in. I don't think there's any going back. I mean, she literally almost got evicted for him. Uh, in the game, they're kind of linked. I don't think there's any question at this point. I don't think they're as linked as like a, a Brendan, Rachel kind of scenario, but they, they're definitely linked in the, in the fact that people see that they're close. But there are a lot of other duos that aren't even in showmances that, in my opinion, are a lot closer than people get credit to, right? And part of that is the way that it's edited. But the other part is, like, we, we see when we're watching the live feeds. And I feel like I've seen su- certain duos, like, together so often that I'm shocked the other the other house guests don't kind of see it. Like, you know, when will we see the initial breakup of T-Core and Chemo idea coming up? When will we see the breakup of... I, I mean... <laughs> I was gonna say Chelsea, Cam, and Cedric, but that I mean, we saw that tonight, but that wasn't even intentional. You know, when were we gonna see the like the breakup of some of these house guests that are supposedly really cool with each other that you just you see hanging out together all the time? One of them being randomly Joe and Leah seem to be a little close to each other as far as. They're kind of on the outs. They're not doing much. They're playing real low right now, but they're making good moves in the sense of like steering themselves out of most conversations. They're getting on people's good sides when they have to. It's just, it's just an interesting like observation. Like we saw them in the backyard chilling together while everyone else was exercising, and they're like, "Yeah, no, we're good to just lay here." Doug, did you have any thoughts here on how things were kind of shaping up here? with the, the showmance between Rubina and Tucker? Do you think it's a little worse for Rubina's game? Is it good for her game? What do we think about um, it? I feel like Rubina probably, she's working with, like, Chemo and t I feel like it would be good because they'll probably be trying to use Tucker as a number. And then once probably he stops winning comps, he'll be put out of imagine. But I feel like it's probably good for a game so that she can use him as a number and maybe even manipulate him into getting what she wants or what t and Chemo and her want. But I'm very surprised that, like, no one's really said anything about Chemo and t yet. I think the key word is yet, because I don't think this this be happen. Uh, who knows what's going to happen next week, honestly, especially if the wrong person wins power. You know, um, especially, um, I, I think you're right, though. Um, and Kimo and t kind of really became the kind of stars of this week, um, at least in a, a maybe a supporting role kind of way. At least not like so much in the edit, um, at least until tonight's episode. Um, but one of the things that was driving me nuts leading into this week and why I was pretty dead set that nothing was going to happen here was um, as Quinn decides to put on his best power suit, He tried to figure out what he was going to do with his deep fake upgrade as he gets to decide who the nominations are, taking all the power away from Angela. And he decides officially that he is no longer caring about the Pentagon, but is truly a member of the Visionaries with T-Core and Kimo. But it drives me nuts here because leading up to this, Kimo and T-Core have had several conversations between themselves that are very, would shift the game in so much more of a different strategic direction, but they're just refusing to have these conversations. They keep sitting on it, waiting to make the move. And this week, especially with Quinn having all the power, one of the names that he kept floating around here is Rubina. And Emo and t were literally doing absolutely nothing to give him any sort of pushback whatsoever when it came to her possibly going on the block and situation where it's like dude like you know she's possibly going to be a potential nominee possibly with Mackenzie, possibly with tucker at this point why were they giving no sort of you know indication to quinn who's knows that it probably at this point um would have done anything they said now that we know that um it, it just it threw up so much question um, for me as far as what Kimo and Tikor's initial game was. Um, ultimately, we'll figure that out later this week that they actually do have some game, or at least they got some game Wednesday night, finally. Um, but instead, we have Cedric 
decide that he needs to figure out this, uh, he needs to resolve this whole situation with Tucker. He's going to fall on his sword and be the person that, you know what, I am going to take it upon myself. I will defeat Tucker because I've beaten him before and decides to nominate himself. Because at least, you know, worst case scenario, MJ will still be up on the block to take the fall on nomination night. Right? Seems right. Mm. Hello! Eh, we'll get to I that mean, later. But, you know, did we have any thoughts here on Cedric's decision here? Because I thought that this was all about pride. And I'm just like, oof. He just showed his age with, with choosing to step up like that. I mean, I think Cedric was stupid. I don't think you ever choose to be the pawn, especially after the last three weeks of the most stale gameplay we've seen in a while, right? Of people just, like, refusing to make big moves. Uh, Honestly, Angela was the biggest move maker this season before tonight because she decided to get out one of the people that actually had a chance of winning a lot of comps in Big Brother history of, like, He's young, he's athletic, people are going to like him automatically, and she immediately, like, throws him up on the block and gets rid of him. She has a successful HOH, essentially, because of this. But Cedric voting himself upon the block is one of the dumbest things. And actually, I kind of want to touch back on the point you said about Quinn, and or about Chemo and uh, Tikor trying to, like, save Rubina, because I'm not sure what the choices were for that, since Quinn is, like, dumb. Um, and just to, like, just to quickly, like, explain what I'm saying is Quinn is the deep fake HOH. He can't put himself up. He can't put Angela up, right? He puts up Tucker and Mackenzie and and Cedric because Cedric volunteers or whatever. Looking at, like, the rest of the list of the people, most of the people in the house are are in one of his alliances of either the Visionaries, the Pentagon, and the Collective, which all overlap. And so the only people left to really put up on the block that aren't included in those is basically Leah. And you know he's in this, like, I love Leah because I'm a weird stalker of her kind of feeling. So I don't know what T-Core and Kimo really could have done to protect Rubina because she was the only other person left. Throw Leah so under the bus up. and show the fact that Leah hates Quinn. They, I mean, he would have believed her. Uh, I well, hear you, but, like, does that really do anything for... Like, after Tucker comes down, like, if Leah stays, like, they've made an enemy. If Mackenzie stays, she might not trust them as much because of the Leah thing. Like, I just, I don't know. For me, it's, like, showing your cards too early of, like, how connected you are to Rabina, Especially because they're supposedly supposed to be in the visionaries with him. So, like, if they show too much of their hand about Rabina being, like their number one or like someone who's very close to them there's this feedback and also i think this decision of them playing passively works extremely well and is one of the big reasons as to why this week ends up being so chaotic and game-changing i feel like they probably could have told him about uh leah like being all fake because he's suspecting her to not really even be uh that trustworthy that she would probably flip on him at any point so he already has sometimes like seeds of doubt with that so i feel like it would have worked for them to tell tell him that oh yeah leah is just is just pretty much using you right now i mean either way it comes out at the end of this week here that i mean who knows if quinn's in on this by the way um are we assuming quinn was in on the flip or not here. I I don't I don't know. We never really got any seventh where Quinn stood here. I don't but know. um it, it, it I mean yeah, it, it sounds like here at this point he's gonna find out Leah's against him anyway, so it would have been in his best benefit probably to have her up as a vote, because that would have been one vote to not be on the block that would have possibly voted for I don't know. Um there uh, there's just so many other things that I mean ultimately it works out for chemo and T Core, so I'm not gonna hate them on too much for it. Um, I'm just hoping now this whole passive gameplay situation is over for a little bit, you know, like hopefully they'll, they will, are in it to make moves moving forward here. Cause, um, I, I don't think there's any going back after this week. Um, especially when we had our deep fake Angela, which I'm just, 
oh my god, I was so excited to see a deep fake Angela. I don't know about y'all, but the more yeah. deep fake Angelas we get, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Which we, we like, might get more. Get more AI Angelos. That wasn't Angelo. <laughs> wow! Imagine. <laughs> well, we get our nominations here again, and the best part about this whole situation with uh, Ansley call, calling the secret meeting and having the big Angela is every single time something happened here, Angela like, I didn't do that. That wasn't me. I didn't say that. I did not nominate her, Kenzie. No. I didn't. <laughs> just like <laughs> Angela's amazing. She's so good. Uh, so glad she's safe. Um, but I think, or at least I think we're assuming here, based on the fact she doesn't have power, she will get to compete next week. Obviously, she didn't get a vote this week, but I'm assuming she'll be on that wall when we tune in um, in an hour or so when that happens. So um, yeah, all of them. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, even Quinn, right? Or no, not Quinn. Yeah, Quinn even Quinn. Yeah, Quinn, Quinn does? Okay, so Quinn is getting a chance to do it. Okay, all right, that's fine. I mean, it's a, kind of like a reset then, which is coming from a, a very perfect time here. Um, especially because, um, you know, uh, I think we actually already talked about that part. We just talked about the veto. Um, <laughs> where uh, Joseph and Brooklyn get picked for the POV, which is Binary Bridge, and it's basically Squid Games, Glass Bridge, but make it head-to-head -head and less deadly. Um, they'll face off in a random draw uh, against another player, and the player with the fastest time between the winners of the first three matchups will automatically advance to the final round and compete against the winner of the matchup between the next two winners. Um, we get a MJ and Cedric uh, semifinal face-off where they go head-in-head -head, uh, in a very, very smart strategic move, I think, from Cedric. Um, initially, early on, where I thought he was probably going to end up winning this, even though, honestly, let's be real, it's all luck at the end of the day. Luck and memorization. So it's really hard to be really good at this <laughs> um so we get a final face off basically between Cedric and Tucker and thankfully Tucker wins the head of household and a lot of the drama for the rest of that episode is whether or not Tucker is going to use it and the fact that they're actually able to build up suspense as to whether or not Tucker was actually going to use this veto on himself given the fact that he didn't use the last one on himself was actually pretty good. I was actually a little worried that he might not do it. Um, was anybody a little worried that Tucker was not going to use the veto on himself, especially because they were going to somewhat threaten that Rubina was going to be the replacement nominee since t and Kimo were not pushing it still? So. I honestly <laughs> thought that Tucker was just not going to use it whatsoever and try to win the AI battle arena just so he can get uh, Cedric out. I mean, I was nervous, but I thankfully he used it because he, he needs to still be here or else we knew that everyone was just going to constantly follow this collective and boring bullshit that we were going to see all damn season long. Like, I, I hate that. I hate when they do, like, a name personalized early on. It never makes sense. There's always people who are on the bottom that don't want to admit they are. It's just boring. I agree. I was a little worried that, I mean, this was, I think, the, the potential outcome that we thought was probably going to happen here, um, that either Mackenzie or Rubina were probably likely going to be the one leaving this week. Um, I, it felt like Cedric was pretty safe. Um, but that was until we start this week, and I want to say probably maybe like a day or two ago, when this alliance actually was officially formed, and it's the five points of Kimo, Kikor, Tucker, and Rubina plus Brooklyn. Um, but we could really just call it I'd probably the four points because, I mean, like, Brooklyn was really still with Pentagon, and she's really kind of just here to, at least from my perspective, shift a lot of their ideas into things that would be better for the Pentagon versus things that would be good for her. Uh, but it, at this point, Kimo, who has been told about the Pentagon's existence from Quinn, is ready to blow it up. And I can't believe we ever thought that they said that on live TV that they're going to blow up the Pentagon. Like, so much happened in this episode. Um, on an election year, gasp. Um, but um, things get even better here 
when Angela spies on their conversation after having her spy mission where she's covertly laying on the floor, listening up against the wall, and then breaks into the alliance, asking to please let her be included, begging that she will be on the bottom of the group, that she just wants a group. Um... <laughs> Well, what are our thoughts here on this whole counter lines forming here? And it, did we really think that there were some legs here for the flip to potentially come into play, especially because we kind of learn here throughout the week as well that MJ is ready to kind of make a move against Cedric and Leah is also ready to make a move against Cedric, which I personally still felt like they were going to have cold feet. I did not see the flip coming. Did we really think going into this vote here, there was a possibility of a flip? Uh, oh, sorry. No, you go. I was gonna say, as soon as they were like talking to Mackenzie and Leah, I was like, "Wait a damn minute! I have some hope." <laughs> I thought that, um, depending on who was up, I felt like if it was like Cedric versus Mackenzie, I didn't know because I know Leah has been trying to separate herself from Mackenzie since the first week, so it was very iffy if they were going to be able to get it done or not, in my opinion, from what I saw. Yeah, I'll be honest, I did not have a lot of faith that this was going to go down. I was very negative throughout the whole process here, um, especially when Rubina came so close to winning that AI arena, which I was not expecting her to have really much of a chance here. I thought Cedric was going to kind of run away with this one. Um, it was called Upload Download, where the nominees have to land five balls on the center of this ramp. And once they get five balls in the center, they will have to use these other balls to knock those five balls off the center. And first one to uh, get all five balls off and hit their buzzer wins. Um, Rubina was behind in this from the start, it seemed like Cedric maybe was first and then Mackenzie was starting to really build up a lot of momentum getting it there. Then all of a sudden, Rubina was nailing them one at a time on that ramp, which I was not expecting her to do. And then she's becoming the first person to, I, I think she gets down to literally one ball left on her thing. The cameras are focused on her and she finally knocks it off. She goes to run and hit the buzzer. Then all of a sudden, we find out Mackenzie all of a sudden had made a comeback here and won. Um, Doug, I know you had some thoughts here about how this competition went down. Um, what were your thoughts here on the AI arena tonight? Um, I thought it could have been executed so, so, so much better if they just literally gave us the view of all three side by side, which they did, but they just like, oh, no, we're just going to focus on one person, and then we don't even see the person who wins win, We because we're just so focused on Rubina. It's just like it was frustrating as a viewer to watch, like, you you think, oh, Rubina's about to win, but then all of a sudden, oh no, here's McK uh, Mackenzie out of nowhere because we can't even see him because the editors just decide to not even show her for some reason. I thought that was very poor, poor editing on their part right there. Welcome to Big Brother, Doug. They're really, Big Brother. really horrible at this whole thing when it comes to their live competitions. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, I, I agree that I don't understand why they chose that kind of camera angle. I, it's very easy to go like a, to a split sp screen, screen, right? And just show the two girls going at it, right? Like, I, I, I don't know up until that point, actually. I think if I remember correctly, Rubina had like maybe one ball and then Mackenzie and Cedric were kind of at the same amount. So I kind of see why they decided to just go to Rubina. But once you start noticing that Mackenzie is getting these balls, like, you need to, like, show us or pan out or do something. Like, they're next to each other. Like, you could have easily shown us at the same screen there. But, you know, I'm not an editor. I don't know. Um, but we, we think we get the perfect storm here with Mackenzie winning. It, it, I think it had to happen. I think it was fate that it came down to literal milliseconds for Mackenzie winning. And, Jack, do you think this was the correct outcome? Do you think if Mackenzie was still on the block? That she would have been eliminated or evicted here. Or do you think there's any way that Mackenzie would have stayed had Rubina won? I really do believe 100% that if Mackenzie had been up on the block against 
Cedric or against Ravina, she would have been going home. So I actually think this is the best possible outcome for the shift in the house of power because saving Ravina, getting rid of Mackenzie, and keeping Cedric. Um, I mean, I don't really see that as like a really great outcome for anyone who's in the minority power or doesn't feel like they have a space in the game. I really do think that it kind of relied on Mackenzie getting this. Look, I was very excited. I wanted Ravina to win this really badly because I just wanted Ravina to stay. Um, so when she lost at the last like millisecond, I was, cause, like I was like yes, like I I was like super hyped, excited because I thought Ravina had that in the bag. She won. And then I was, like, shocked. I was like, oh, no. But then I was like, well, okay, so there's still the chance, because if it were me, I would keep Rubina, because also Cedric is supposedly, like, the bigger comp threat. Um, so I, I everything happened extremely well. Um, I, I think that it was necessary, though. I think you're right. It was 1,000% necessary for this to happen. Yeah, I'm a little worried that if... Uh... The uh, McK or Mackenzie doesn't pull that out. She doesn't. She doesn't stay. Um, but we get the perfect storm again of just uh, this week has been one by one thinking like all the people not necessarily that I love a hundred percent, um, but I'm rooting for because they're on the outside. I wanted to see something shaken up, and thank God this happened. The house finally, finally shakes up here huge vote has finally gone down and and i think what was the most surprising part because we didn't even get any indication of this was that joseph was also in on this plan joining tcor Kimo, leah mackenzie and tucker to evict cedric which i think is kind of the ultimate karma for cedric considering he tried to evict tucker who was in the same exact position that he was in last week so for cedric to end up leaving this week after losing two back-to-back -back opportunities. It just feels like, honestly, just such a lesson, such a life lesson <laughs> here for, for young Cedric here. Um, he stood on his hill. He died on his hill. Instead of being a little bit smarter, not sacrificing his game for, you know, pride. But, you know, hopefully Cedric had a fun experience. Um, I was not expecting this outcome. I figured Cedric had a few more weeks down the line here, but uh, after last week, I think he really fortunately set himself up to be uh, for this to happen to him. So, um, do we have any final words for Cedric? And also, let's do a little bit of mourning for Painless as well, too, because he only has Mackenzie left, and ooh, not looking good for him, bro. Not looking good. I mean, look. Tucker warned Cedric that they needed to get a power out last week, and they needed to get this power because it was way too strong. Cedric did not want to listen to this. Cedric said, no, Quinn is in my alliance. It's going to be fine. Isn't it very interesting that now Cedric has been voted out by the power that he was warned about because he thought he was in a good position, but then he throws himself under the bus for what reason other than to try to act cool. Like, what was the reason other than, like, trying to stick it to Tucker and, like, prove to Quinn that he, like, had his back the whole time, even though he had already proven without a doubt, uh, without a shred of doubt, that he had Quinn's back all last week? What was the point? He threw himself on the block just to get evicted fourth pre-jury. The only good news about him being evicted free jury is that if they decide to ever evict Angela, which I'm not sure they will, people have been saying they would be dreading being in the jury house with her. I mean, also, I would dread being in the house with Quinn, so, like, but he didn't seem to mind, I mean, Quinn's ugly self, so, um, you know, maybe he's fine with that, I don't know. But at least he gets to now watch from afar, and maybe he can, like, really, like you said, like, big life lesson. You know, I think his lack of self-awareness and awareness in this game is really going to, like, eat it, eat him up a little bit when he gets out and sees things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it, 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 
I, I don't really know per se, but yeah, I, I think that uh, he, he probably, I, I don't think Cedric knew much about the game coming into it. I think he was trying to learn as he went along here and you can kind of tell that he was not very prepared for what the game had to offer. <laughs> um, Doug, go ahead and give us our, our final words for young Cedric. Um, I feel like I'm happy that Cedric's gone because I feel like had he stayed and they t- took out Rabina, we would have seen like an, uh, probably Angela, Mackenzie, Leah, and like uh, probably go back to back to back and maybe Tucker if he doesn't win and have basically Kimo and T-Core be the season's version of like Laurel from. Uh, Ghost uh, Survivor Ghost Island, who was like, ah, I want to uh, turn on Dom, Dom and Wendell, but you know what? I'm not going to do it now every single week. So I'm happy that they actually finally pulled the trigger and actually decided to do a big <laughs> blindside like this this early so we don't have boring uh, weeks of knowing, yeah, we know who's going to go home. I'm very happy this house seems very fluid as well, too. I'm very, very excited for some gameplay. Um, And uh, hopefully, um, because tonight's the first night that we're actually, you know, recording on Eviction Night. So we don't have spoilers. We don't have really that much extra to talk about. Um, Or maybe we do. We actually have two big things I think I want to talk about. First, obviously, we kind of talked on it a little bit, uh, this podcast. But uh, tonight we will have the live wall comp at Household. Who do we think has the best chance of winning here? Um, Because I'm thinking it might actually be Cam, possibly Tucker. Or I could maybe even see like a a Chelsea win here or even possibly Mackenzie. Um, I I kind of would like to see the power maybe stay with Tucker's side for a little bit here. But um, I'm all about drama, so I'm kind of just all about whatever is going to give us the most exciting gameplay at the end of the day. Uh, is there anybody that we're particularly rooting for or think has the best chance of winning tonight? I would love to see Angela win. I don't know if it's possible, but I that would be the best case scenario to see even more chaos happen because of Angela and her craziness. Although there is no more crazy eyes in the house, so... You might have to come up with something new this week. Angela winning a wall comp would be the craziest thing that would ever come out of Big Brother. <laughs> Jack, do you have any thoughts I mean, on the wall comp tonight? Honestly, if he hadn't gone home, I really thought Cedric had a really good chance at this. You know, I think people generally who have a little bit less, like, bigger muscles have done well in this competition. So I want to say people like Mackenzie and Leah have a really good shot here. Gwen could even have a good shot if he can just, like, mentally keep himself okay. I don't really care for that to happen, obviously, as I don't like Quinn at all. So, I don't hope he wins. Um, Tucker might have a good chance. He is pretty lean. He does have quite a bit of muscle, though, and I wonder if eventually that'll take him off. But I, I think this comes down to a big mental component of, do you want it? Do you want to, like, continue the pain? And then I think there are people who are just going to, like, absolutely throw this comp on purpose. Like, Joe, for example, like, he doesn't really have anything to gain right now getting HOH. And if it were me, not only does he not have much to gain, I would be like, well, you don't really, like, need anything. Like, I don't think anyone's going to come after him, so he probably just shouldn't do it. And I I think it just comes down to, like, who needs this right now? Uh, I think Chelsea has a good chance of winning. Brooklyn could be up there. Um, obviously, they're probably feeling the heat, but you never know because t still has, like, you know, a friendship and alliance kind of with them, so she, her and Kimo may still want to work together with them, even though they just flipped and completely kind of betrayed their trust. I don't know. There's a lot of options moving forward here, honestly. Who kind of knows what the best option is at this point? Um, I just, I just want whoever wins it to make some good moves. That's all we can hope for. We need we need some good game plan. We need this to continue. Um, yeah. But uh, we will say that there is another power out here tonight. And it was teased on that special that they had on Tuesday. I, I didn't even watch it. 
um, I was told not to. I told it was, it was just to not bother. So didn't watch the recap. Sorry, Taylor, Taylor Hall. You're my favorite. Just like Brooklyn, Taylor Hall forever. Um, anyway, um, she, uh, where were we going? Oh yeah. Um, the saboteur is back, but it's called the AI instigator and it's about to be unleashed on the big brother house after America's vote. Um, I got to laugh cause I thought Angela was already in the house. But I guess we need the AI instigator in the house too. So um, I guess how it's going to work is going to be much like Big Brother 12 here, it sounds like, uh, where they'll get secret tasks and uh, things that they'll have to release using the deep fakes of the house guests, which, you know, they paid a lot of money for those. So they're going to probably be using those all season long, um, which I'm fine with. More deep fake Angela. It's fine with me. Um, but it seems like they'll probably be getting a monetary prize for winning this power and not necessarily like an actual power per se in the game. Uh, do we have any thoughts on who is going to be named the AI instigator by America? And do we think this power is going to be anything but a filler part of the episode? Do we think this will actually play a role in uh, some actual secret powers that they may get if they are successful? I don't see that happening. I, I think this power is just for straight up just for like oh, we got some content going on because honestly, they're gonna find out about this power, find out there's these random ass AI people coming in saying crazy stuff. But is anyone gonna really believe it after what happened last week especially? They shouldn't. And I think this is just a way for the fans to it's like kind of picking like America's favorite house guests early on. So, like, maybe right now in the season, someone is America's favorite house guest. Maybe by the end, it won't be the same person. And this is a way to, like, award someone some money. And that's all. So, do you have any thoughts on how the secret instigator or AI instigator might be played out here? And do you have any things or thoughts on who it could be? Because I think it's probably going to be Tucker. I don't see a world where, yeah. I, where Tucker doesn't get it. I feel like it'll probably t be Tucker, but I would love to see Angela get it. That that would be the best case. The best case scenario for this season is have Angela win every single thing and, and just create the most chaos. That would be the best case scenario for this entire season. But I do think Angela might be one of the only people that would actually believe what's on there. Because, like, she... This week, she was told... Mike Quinn, what the power was and what it does in the very first week, and she still thought she would put up the noms, even though he literally told her what they were, so anything is possible with Angela. I almost kind of want to see her react to whatever's happening, more so than her knowing what it is. I want to see her react, but I, I kind of don't hope it's Angela. I, I do think it's Tucker. I think Tucker will probably get it. Um, but who knows what has in store here, um, but what we do know at least uh, looking at our draft here, Painless. Again, Painless is in trouble. He only has Mackenzie presenting him here. Um, Callow and I still have yet to be touched here. Hopefully that will continue for a little bit longer um, as Callow still has uh, Cam, Chelsea, and Leah. Well, I have Joseph, Kimo, and Tucker. And Jack and Doug, you guys are both down one player as well too. Doug, you still have t -Core and Quinn. Well, Jack, you have Rubina. And Brooklyn. Oh, just kidding. Oh, yeah. Brooklyn as well, too. Um, any thoughts here? Final thoughts as we head into week five of Big Brother Season 26. Doug? Um, I, like I said, I just want to see Angela win everything just to throw everything off because you have no idea what she's thinking and what she's going to do. Because right now she's close to Tucker, but he can say one thing and she's she might go on a whole tirade just like how she did against Matt. So I'm all for the drama. Hope Angela stays in the light and so we get to maximize that drama. <laughs> I'm all about the drama. Jack? What you thinking? What's your final thoughts as we head into week five? You know, this is really nice because finally it feels like Big Brother is back to expect the unexpected, where a lot of things have been expected. Right now, it really is anyone's game still. There's a lot going on. Obviously, we have our phase. We have people who we think are playing a better game than others. 
But right now, we are really looking at expect the unexpected. Like, things are happening, powers are shifting, alliances are crumbling. This is by far, like, the best week in the house right now due to, like, on a strategic level, gameplay-wise. Like, when you have a big target on the block, take the shot. Joseph said in, like, episode three or four, whatever it was, when they finally evicted Man, like, we're not going to be like other seasons where we're just going to let the the really strong people keep going till the end. And I, I think they proved that, you know? Like, take the shot. And they are taking the shot. And I think that's one of the reasons that um, Joe even flipped and was like, you know what? No, we're taking the shot. Because, actually, I know that there's a plan going on. People talk to me about it. And it's exciting to see people actually want to play this game and not just play the most boring game possible like we've seen a thousand times before. Mm -hmm. I think we are in uh, the midst of a very, very exciting uh, portion of the game here. Um, it's been unpredictable to start. Hopefully the unpredictability continues. That's all we could really ask for. And um, all I could ask for here, y'all, is that if you made it this far, thank you so much. And I, I hope if you haven't already, Please like and subscribe because it lets us know that you are enjoying the content. And there is going to be so much content over the rest of the summer here. Um, because y'all, like, so much TV here. We still have uh, more Big Brother 26. I want to say we're probably, like, what? Like, we still got to October. Still got, like, another, like, two months of Big Brother left. Um, Canada vs. the World 2 will be ending next week. Uh, but don't you worry, because Global All-Stars starts tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that coverage. And we'll also probably be doing some maybe bi-weekly coverage here on the Challenge Season 40, uh, especially after that two-part premiere. Um, that was so good, so hyped for Challenge Season 40 here as well, too. Um, and we can talk about our draft there, too, because <laughs> that draft, ooh, that draft. Um, but, you know, until next time, y'all. On behalf of my co-casters, Doug and Jack, this is Renegade signing out. But remember, keep spilling that tea, y'all. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.